Johnny Cage. I turn on that TV set of mine, settle in my favorite chair, and I recline. Now you may think it's asinine, but it's all mine. But nine at nine. All right, number nine. Did you know it used to be that uh, Sweden's Twitter account was given to a random citizen every week to tweet whatever the heck he or she wanted? It started back in 2011. The idea was to show Sweden as it really exists, and it went pretty well. There was real information along with some silly gags. Sweden and Denmark started making fun of each other for their flags, their price of alcohol, and even the Swedish chef. But around 2018, Things took a turn. Oh, oh, boy. Yeah, exactly. The snark turned into people blocking each other. People were mean. Women were harassed. So Sweden had to take back their Twitter account and said every project has an end, and it is time for oh. us to uh, move on. That's too bad. Takes mm. one Yahoo getting yeah. control uh, yeah. of the account. And, uh, well, that will last about 97 seconds yeah. in the U.S. Yeah. 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 Number eight, this is pretty blatant. Napflix is a free online channel of boring videos and movies to help you fall asleep. The titles are things like Dad Stamps, Koala Slow Life, Wonderful World of Tupperware, and this one, the World Chess Finals from 2013. On the homepage right now, a lecture entitled Karl Marx in the Theory of Alienation. Ugh. Learning. Hmm. How boring. Hmm. All right, number seven. Oscar nominees get lots of goodies in their swag bags this year. But here's one that caught our eye, the little hammer from PETA. If animal control can't come right away, dial 911. If 911 can't help, you may need to break the window and remove the dog yourself. Of course, be careful not to harm the dog in the process. Every year, dogs suffer and die when left in a parked car on a warm day, even when it's just for a minute. Definitely don't make that mistake, but also be prepared to help a dog in a hot car. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. So. Huh. Yeah, also don't forget the difference between a real dog and a stuffed dog. <laughs> yeah. That guy just broke someone's window over right? a stuffed animal in the back Times are seat. tough. They couldn't budget for a real one for the commercial. Yeah. Well, the ad also reminds people to make sure you look for the dog's owner first, then try other steps before you break uh, the window. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, sure it's a real animal. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right, number six, fire poles are iconic firehouse traditions. A Chicago firefighter named David Kenyon came up with the idea for firefighters to slide down poles back in 1878. He noticed uh, that a co-worker had used a hay transport, bundling pole, uh, hay transport bundling pole to slide down and got from the third floor to the first floor way quicker than anyone else. It's worked since then, but in recent years, they've been trying out some other options. Some firehouses are located in single-story complexes instead of multi-level. Other houses are being fitted with slides or stairs, which can be slower but safer. How can it be safer than a slide? Hmm. You're going down the stairs, you break an ankle. A slide right. would make going to a fire yeah. that much more fun. You would yes. think so. Yeah. Yep. That's the key right there. You want people having fun. Yeah. Right. And when they're <laughs> not out on the fire, fire, they can use it also. Yeah. Right. They're in that firehouse a lot. Yeah. Doing, you know, just hanging out. Right. Yeah. They could do a slip and slide maybe also. Put some soap <laughs> on it. Yeah. <laughs> so they make holes. chili a lot. You could slide yeah. right down into a vat of chili. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All oh. kinds of great ideas. Oh, Those right. firefighters sure have made. On that one. Yeah, they yeah. do. They're great. Oh, we're already up to number five. Yeah, we How are. about that? This is just an excuse to look at some amazing video of big wave surf for Nick Von Rupp. All right. Wow. Who is finishing up his season. Yeah. What makes him really unique is that he prefers not to get dragged in by a jet ski, as most of the surfers do for these uh, giant waves. He thinks he has a better shot at getting inside the wave in that barrel if he paddles in. He says, I've never done drugs, but I know this is an addiction. It's such a unique feeling. Yeah. Uh, you consider this a sport? Yeah, well, sure. I do. Yeah, yeah. You think he's got some athletic? Oh, yeah. Prowess? 
you kidding? Sure. You disagree? Oh, look at that. Yeah, it's just like that you're standing on a board. Scary. You have to be in the right place at the have right time. Have you ever tried time. standing I mean, on one of those boards? Sure, but yeah. How do they score that? Is it, is it a, an objective score, like how long you're on it, or is it just... Right. What if you get the yeah. bad wave? I like your form. Like the wave's doing most of the work, Paul. Yeah, you're the right. The wave is doing the work. <laughs> He's just standing on an ironing board. <laughs> Really not much to it. They should have more costuming. <laughs> <laughs> people on other people's shoulders. Right. Yeah. Like the Tommy four. Bartlett water right. show. Right. Now that oh, was a that's show. A sport. You get four or five guys on there, that's no. a sport. This, I think no. you're standing around. <laughs> <laughs> Just mm -hmm. my two cents. Uh -huh. mm. All right, number four. So you want to be an influencer? Yes, I do. Well, Robin, you know this. You're going to need your own green screen. Uh, check this one out, the pop-up studio in a bag from Dropkey. You unpack, you inflate, and set up your shot, and you're ready to broadcast to the world. Wow. Or at least your followers on the social medias. Wow. It comes with lav mics and all special lighting so you can look and sound your best. And oh, it's huge. portable. You can take it just about anywhere. That'd be fun. People are just busting those out in the middle of a park, making TikToks. Should be available soon for about wow. 550 wow. bucks, but really sure. a small price to pay for internet fame. Didn't you uh, budget for a green screen and the man of the people? Uh, we did, and that was, that was a whole that was a whole ordeal unto itself. I, yeah. I feel like you you're setting me up yeah. for a joke, but you're touching on I something don't know. that never really happened. <laughs> so well, what? I mean, that one was only five hundred dollars. So what? What was the budget for the? It's just Robin. a piece of green felt. Can you do it yeah. with like, like a gallon me? of green paint? You don't yeah. need all the yeah. extra stuff, right? I could have done that for you. You didn't even ask well, me. Well, are you in the union? Oh, where's your card? Well, I'm not mm -hmm. in that union. Yeah. Yeah. There you are. Yeah. You dare touch well. it. Did you turn on a light? <laughs> Who moved this table? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number three, a legally blind 78-year-old man has regained his sight after being the first patient to receive a promising type of new corneal implant. Well. It's from a company called Cornmeat. And the key here is that this device can be placed directly into the eye with don no donor tissue needed. Artificial corneal implants already exist, but they usually require a lot of cutting wow. and stitches uh, and some yeah. Ugh, yeah. and some tissue that helps the whole thing work. This new oh device would come with a kit that the doctor uses to install that implant in just about an hour. There might wow. be some surgery, but it's much more simple, they say. And on top of that, it has synthetic material that somehow stimulates the body to grow tissue around the eye and heal. Wow. So the 78-year-old guy could recognize family members, read an eye chart immediately after surgery. Wow, wow. look at us with medical mm. news in the nine at nine. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah. But I love how you explain it by just saying, somehow it works. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a doctor, Listen, Larry. I know you simple. think that I'm I'm good at yeah, right. a Just little works. bit of everything. Yeah. But. Mm, has he ever said that? No. <laughs> <laughs> He's thinking it. Yeah. Okay, number two. Here's something exciting. A special grocery store in the UK that sells expired huh. food. That's a great idea, right? See, almost uh. a third of the food that's made for humans in the world ends up getting thrown out by supermarkets because once the customers see an expiration date, they won't buy it. But we all know that food's usually perfectly fine. Usually. Yeah, 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 more often than not. And the great thing about this store is you pay whatever you want to pay. Wow. Now, now that's, that's my kind of store. Well, you would do, let me ask you this, though. Yeah. The real test is the dairy products. If you see yeah. milk. Or meat. Yeah. I'll start, all right, so let's start with milk because I have a, I can't, with the milk that, if it even comes close to that date on the bottle, really? like two days before I have to get rid of it, I can't. Oh, you're out of your mind. I, so you would, I know that's a sell-by date, and right. it's probably supposed to be good after that. I They're trying to make money off you there, right? I give it two weeks after that. <laughs> <laughs> America's uncle, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. Paul Conrad. <laughs> At least two weeks after the expired date on meat and They're milk. trying to make money right. on the end. Because they're thinking, ah, oh, now you're going to have to go buy the new stuff. It's yeah. perfectly fine for a few weeks, I would think. You would think. So you, I, would, tr you would try the expired milk. I've had the expired oh. milk regularly. I don't, think it's, I don't it's, think it's a matter of asking him would he drink expired milk. I think the question is how far after the expiration yeah. date would yeah. you drink the yeah, milk? Yeah, what's weeks. your limit? Two weeks. Two weeks? <laughs> 
Yeah, two weeks. Well, there's your next courtesy desk. All right, bring no, it on. No, you can't. That's what about if it's already been opened and it's two weeks? Yeah, two weeks. So it's open, then it goes it's, two weeks. It's a suggested expiration date, right? They're making all this stuff up. Just get in there. Give it a sniff. If it's yeah. chunky, shake it up a little bit. Get the chunks. Oh. And it's well, wait a you could turn that into cottage cheese. Why yeah, would you throw exactly it away? Exactly right. Yeah. Just don't use a straw. Oh, oh you are missing your calling on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Right. All right. Right. <laughs> Number one, another terrible ventriloquist. It's Joe Beasley and oh. Cheeky oh, Monkey. This yes. clip is from an old show on the BBC called Knowing Me, Knowing You, with comedian Steve Coogan. All right. Oh God. <laughs> Dipper. And uh, we we're on the Big Dipper, right? And we're going about 200 mi miles an hour. 200 miles an hour on, on, the, on the Big Dipper. And um, we go on the Big Dipper, right? And we come round the corner. And Cheeky Monkey, right? He... Um... We get, we're on the Big Dipper, right? No. That... Oh, you Cheeky Monkey. He's made me forget. It's his fault, ladies and gentlemen. He's made me forget. He made. Oh, he... Oh, he's always doing that, ladies and gentlemen. Forget, forget, forget the joke there. Cheek, che, cheeky monkey, cheeky, cheeky monkey. Ladies and gentlemen, Joe Beasley che, and Cheeky che, Monkey. Oh my God. Oh my God. I thought that was the bit. So, yeah. I think you've been. Uh, I think you've been very brave. There's more jokes, Alan. Hey, There's plenty more. It's fine. Just a little mistake. I don't think it's working. Just a little mistake. I should, should apologise to Cheeky Monkey. Stop, stop it! Stop it! Actually, funnier than most. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That he's not actually talking in the voice of the monkey to me. Anyway, that's the night. All right.